This morning, God has got a great message for us. And if you will, if you'll turn in your Bible to several different places, if you have the Word of God this morning, please use it. We have the Scripture up there this morning. I'm actually going to go to the King James Version this morning and, and read several Scriptures to you. But our text this morning is actually found in Hebrews chapter 12. Our text is found in Hebrews chapter 12. And by the way, I want to thank uh, Deanna. I said, Deanna, if you would, as you're building the PowerPoint this week, if you will build it around an Olympic kind of theme. And she did a great job, as you see this, as she presents it to, to us on the screen with today's message. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. There are several things that I'm going to ask you to circle and to outline in your Bible. It's important for you to write in the Word of God. I think that as you write and underline things, you're much more likely to remember it. It will bring back uh, things that the Holy Spirit has spoke to you in the message as you go back to these verses of Scripture. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says this, Wherefore, seeing, we also are com compassed about by, with so many great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, listen, there are several things I'm going to ask you to underline in circus before we even get into the message this morning. I think it will set the tone for where we're going. If you look in verse number 1, notice here he says, lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Paul says, listen here, he says, lay aside all this weight, lay aside this sin, because it easily besets you, it holds you back. And then he goes on, he says, run with patience. Woo, that's tough. Run with patience. Sometimes we want to just speed things up. He says, we need to run with patience the race that's set before us. How many of you know how long you're going to live? Wouldn't it be neat if we knew exactly the days that we had numbered on this earth, if we knew how long we were going to live? Isn't it amazing that if we knew how many days that God was going to allow us to be on this earth, that we would consider them with such joy and we would take patience in every day that He has given us and get the most out of it? But yet we fly through life as if we have what? As if we have tomorrow and we have that next day. He says, run with patience the life, the race that's set before you. And then he goes on, he says, who do we look to? Who do we look to? He says, look to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher. The author and the finisher. He is in control. And I love what he says here. He says, for the joy that allowed him to endure the cross. Some of you today may be going through a very difficult time in your life, and you're saying to yourself, how in the world do you find joy in that? Well, it's the end result. It's the end result. The joy of the cross for Jesus Christ was knowing that when the penalty was paid, there would be everlasting joy everlasting life he knew that the joy of the cross would not only be everlasting life would it but it would be a salvation for us so the joy was not the pain and the agony it was the end result of what the cross would bring about, would bring about and that's salvation and eternity for those willing to accept him as their lord and savior well that's kind of the beginning the meat of what we have for today's message as we go on. God's got several scriptures for us as we dive into this this morning. Oliver Wendell Holmes said this. I thought this was kind of interesting. He says, I, I find the great thing in this world is not so much where we stand as in what direction we are moving. It's not so much where we stand, it's what direction we're moving. We have a political environment taking place. And I'm not up here to talk about any specific candidate, but I am telling you this. It depends on which direction you're moving in. And I, my prayer is, is that you'll select a candidate that says Jesus Christ is the Lord of their life, that you'll select a candidate that is out for godly values. And I'll leave that up to you. But if you want to find out, you get into God's Word, and that'll help you select a candidate. Amen, church? Amen. So he says, and Oliver Wendell goes on, and he says this, not only in what direction you're moving, but to reach the port of heaven, we must sail sometimes with the wind and sometimes against it. But we must sail and not drift and not just set anchor. We have to be willing to move. We have to be willing to take a stand and move in the direction that God has called us to move. So let me ask you this this morning. What are you running to or what are you running from? The first part of the message this morning, if you're following along in your notes, and I encourage you, I have a place for you to, to write something down. 
And I tell students all the time, I'll always have a place for them to write something down. And the reason I do that is because if you write something down, you're much more likely to remember it. Because not only did you have to put it to thought to listen to it, but you had to put it to thought to put it to paper. So number one, run to face your challenges. Run to face your challenges. Maybe for many of you it may be to run to face your fears. Run to face your challenges. And I thought of no better example than of King David when he was a little boy. When he was a little boy in 1 Samuel chapter 17 through 48, 17 verses 48 exactly through uh, 50, uh, actually through verses 50, it's up on the screen if you'd like to follow along. It says, And it came to pass. When the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and, and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. For those that don't know the story, don't have time to go in all of it this morning, but little boy David was actually going to take some food to his brothers who were going to fight the Philistines. But they were scared to death because this, these Philistines brought about their biggest guy named Goliath. And he was taunting the Israelites. He was telling them how sorry, how no good their God was. He was telling them how scrawny and shrimpy they were and that they would never defeat him. They would never defeat this army. And here was this little boy, David. And you just got to picture him. Uh, he, how many of you have ever met those kids who have no fear? Zero fear. I mean, they'll do it, try anything. Our little Naya, our little granddaughter, she, man, I'll tell you what, she would try anything. Uh, I, got, I got this motorcycle, and man, she wants to run up. She, man, she just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I told Susan, we're going to have to keep an eye on her when she gets older. Boy, she just loved that motor. I mean, she has zero fear. I think sometimes that's a good thing. As we get older, we begin to fear a lot of things, don't we? In fact, we fear things sometimes that really have no, no relevance to fear, so to speak. We, maybe it's things we've heard or things we've seen, and all of a sudden we're afraid of it. Here was David. He had zero fear. He, he didn't understand fear. He says, hey, listen, you're not going to talk about my God this way. And you could just picture King Saul and, and some of the others there saying, hey, listen, boy, shh, be quiet. You're going to get us in more trouble. He says, no, no, he's not going to talk about the Lord like this. He says, I'm going to take him on. And you can see they tried to put all this armor on him, which didn't fit him. He was way too small for that. He said, oh, no, no, I don't need that. He says, all I need is God. Amen. Hey, let me tell you something, folks. You're trying everything. Maybe what you need to say is all I need is God. Maybe a challenge or a fear that you're facing. Why don't you put all this other stuff aside that you've already tried? And why don't you say all I need is God? So David went out to face that Philistine. All he had was a bag that had some stones in it and a sling. I don't know about you, but probably not the best arsenal to face a giant. But all he needed was God. Isn't it amazing that God knew right where to put the stone? Hey, listen, something. When you're facing a challenge and facing a fear, God knows right where to put the stone to take care of your problem, to take care of your challenge. Are you with me, church? Why not run to the challenge with God and not run away from the challenge without God? So if you're facing a challenge this morning, you're facing a fear, why don't you run to it? Run with God. Take with him the armor that he has for you. Notice this in this verse number 50. It said, David prevailed. I call that victory. Victory is mine, says the Lord. You looking for victory this morning? Why not claim it in Jesus' name? You've tried everything else. Why not claim it in Jesus' name? So quit running from your fears. Run to the challenges. Be willing to face them. Number two, run to find refuge or run to find safety and healing. Run to find refuge, safety, or healing. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, it says this, The name of the Lord is a what, church? Strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. How many of you would agree with me the, the, this morning that in the Lord we have safety? In the Lord we have strength. In the Lord we have power. In the Lord we have endurance. In the Lord we have patience. You want a strong tower? Run to the Lord. You want safety? Run to the Lord.
just this past week, uh, Bill had several of our ladies in here going through a firearms safety course. I will tell you, church, we are probably the safest church in all of Union County. Uh, I have no doubt. Uh, in fact, if someone comes to break into the church or do any harm to anyone in here, we're going to pray for them. And if you guys do any harm to him, we need to make sure they are saved because I have no doubt on the shots of, that you guys can fire in here. Run to safety for the Lord. Amen, church? We need to, listen, he says that he is a strong tower. How many of you have already figured out there is none other like God? There is none other like him. He is all-powerful. Amen, church? We try to do so much on our own. Going back to the challenges and the fears. Life in and of itself is tough, church. If you all figured that out, life's tough. We need to run to that strong tower. The power of the Lord. This morning there are several as we pray for healing. Cody's been on my mind all week, this young man that we continue to pray for. Terminal cancer. We have no idea what the will of God is in that we pray for our will that God would perform a miracle of healing. But we have no idea because we don't know the end result. We don't know at the end what God has planned nor what and how he will use what he will do. But we do pray for healing. The word of God says that we're to pray for healing. The word of God says we're to cast our burdens and our cares before his throne. Our refuge is in him. Maybe this morning that you've got a physical problem. Maybe it's a whatever. But the, the Word of God says not only is, our, is He our tower and our strength, but He also provides for us this healing. I want you to notice this in Mark chapter 6, verse number 54 and 50 through 56. Jesus is coming here and there's a crowd that sees him and I want you to notice this and it says and when they were come out of the ship straightway they knew him. If you have never underlined that in your Bible underline those three words they knew him. Before you can come to God you have to know him church. Are you listening to him? And I mean not having a head knowledge of him I mean having a heart knowledge. Before you can come to the Lord you have to know him. Isn't it amazing that there are many, they only call upon the Lord when they're in dire straits. They only come to Him when they got a problem. They didn't know Him before, but now all of a sudden, they come to Him with a problem. I want you to notice here, it says, they knew Him. What does that mean? They knew who He was. They knew what He was about. They knew what He had the power to do. Notice in verse number 55, it says, and they ran through... That whole region round about it and began to carry out to the uh, about in beds those that were sick where they had heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into the village or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him, what's it say, church? They were made whole. Why is that that? The, the, they knew him. They knew what he had the power to do. They had heard about him. Well, churches, I, I think churches were failing. We're failing to talk about the power of God. We're given all this warm and fuzzy stuff, but I think it's important that we talk about who God is, what He has the power to do. He's the same God of yesterday, today, church. He still has that same power. Why are, not, why are we not running to Him? Why? Are, uh, I just heard this past week that, that we're praying for our nation. Why is it all of a sudden we're, we, it's time for us to start praying for our nation? We should have been praying for our nation years ago. We should be praying for our nation every day. We should be praying for our leaders every day. Why is it when we find a crisis, it's time to pray? We know who He is. He's never, he's never changed. He's always the same. He's still our refuge. He's still our power. He still has the power to heal. He still has the power to change lives. How about you this morning? How about you? Where are you finding your refuge? Where are you finding your safety? Where are you finding this healing, not only of the mind, the healing of the body? Where are you finding this this morning and everything else but Him? The Word of God says that if you know Him, you'll run to Him. You'll run to Him. Well, number three, it says, run from all temptation. There are things we are to run to in church. There are things we are to run from. Amen? Amen. There are things that we need to run from. 
The Word of God says not only are we to run to Him, but we're to run away from temptation. Run away from temptation. Run from those things that would separate us from our relationship with God. That would take us out of fellowship with Him. I want you to notice here in Genesis chapter 39, all the way back in the Old Testament, there was a young man named Joseph, and I don't have time to tell you the whole story about how he got into Potiphar's house and, and how he was given command and rule over certain things. But Joseph, a man of integrity, a man of character, a man of God, found himself in this home to do the job he was supposed to do. And there was a young lady there that was going to seduce him. See, Daddy wasn't home. Her husband wasn't home, but she found this young man. And she was going to seduce this young man. And this is what happened, if you'll notice, in Genesis chapter 39, verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. You see, Joseph was there to do a responsibility. He was trusted to do his work. And it goes on and it says, And there was none of the men of the house there within. Joseph found himself inside this home alone to do his job. Again, a man of integrity, a man that could be trusted. Look what happens. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Come lie with me. And he left his garment in his hand, and he fled, and he got out. Amen, church? Amen. Joseph was in a predicament, wasn't he? There he was all alone. I would dare say she was probably a beautiful woman. And not only did he run, but what did he do? He ran so fast, he left everything there. He didn't turn back. He didn't ask questions. He didn't look to see if this was going to work out. She didn't think about it. He took off and ran. Let me tell you something. When you find yourself in a situation, a place that you shouldn't be, a place that causes temptation, don't think about it. Don't pause and wonder if you're going to get caught. Don't pause and wonder if it might feel good for a second. You get out of there. There's an old saying that says this, sin will take you farther than you want to go and it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. Are you listening to me, church? When you see some temptation, temptation rears its ugly head at you, you get out and get out of there fast. Don't stand there and question it. The Bible says that we're to run from it. The Bible says that we're to flee these lusts, to flee the things that would cause us a separation of our fellowship with the Lord. Well, as we run from temptation, we run to Jesus. Amen, church? We run to Him. I want you to notice in Mark chapter 6, verse 33. Mark chapter 6, verse 33. And this is what it says. And the people saw them departing, and what does it say, church? Many what? Many knew him. Many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all the cities, and out went them and, and came together unto him. And Jesus, verse number 34, and Jesus, when he came out, saw all the people. He saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. What if someday, I don't know that it would ever happen in this country, but what if someday that the government came here and they padlocked all the doors of the church and said, you can't come anymore. It's against the law. How many of us would have that burning desire to run to the Lord no matter what? Ask yourself that question this morning. If the rubber came down to it, would it meet the road in your life to Jesus? The Bible says that we're to run to him. It says, these crowds knew who he was. They had heard about him. And they, man, they just, it says there were so many people there that the Lord had compassion for them. I want you to notice this young, this young politician here. His name was Zacchaeus. It says he was a publican. And notice here in Luke chapter 19, verse 1, he had heard about who this Jesus was. And I began to think about this as I read this verse. Wouldn't it be great that those who use the name of the Lord to get elected actually truly believed in him and, and, and lived that kind of life? Amen, church? Amen. And live those values? This publican here in Luke chapter 19, verse 1, notice it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was. Now I want to pause there for just a moment. F picture yourself as a rich person and a politician. Put yourself in today's world. Who do they want to be around? People that have what? Church begins with an F. Fame. People, these people that have money, notice politicians, they want to be around famous people. Amen? So this man, this publican, this rich person, he'd heard about Jesus. He probably heard about all the fame because the Bible says that everywhere Jesus went, there were crowds around him. 
So here was this, here was this, this guy, Zacchaeus. He was just a little fella. And he says, man, I want to get to know, I want to be around this Jesus. I want to see who he is. He wanted to kind of rub shoulders with him. Amen, church? Let me ask you all a question. Is Jesus a popular thing today, church? Yes or no? It's not really popular to serve the Lord today, is it? Well, it got quiet in here. One time our churches were full because it was kind of a popular thing. We were a Christian nation. It's not so popular anymore, is it? This Zacchaeus, notice here. It says that, that he sought to see Jesus and who he was. And he could not for the press because he was of little stature. You know what the word of God means there when it says he could not because of the press? It means there were so many people around him that they were literally just rubbing against one another. The press, the crowd was so big. Verse number four says, and he ran, he ran before and he climbed up in this sycamore tree to see who Jesus was. For he was to pass that way. And of course, for the rest of you that know the story, the Lord Jesus Christ shared himself as Zacchaeus opened his heart to him. You see, Zacchaeus didn't just find a man of great stature. Jesus, or Zacchaeus found a man called Jesus Christ and a man who could save lives and change lives. Oh, how we today need to be praying, need to be running to the, running to the Lord, running to Jesus, giving our life to Him and praying for those in power in our country that they would run to Jesus and run to the values of the Word of God. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. That needs to be our prayer. We need to run to the Lord. We need to seek Him. Run to Jesus. Number five this morning, it says, run to tell about Jesus. Run to tell others about Jesus. Well, preacher, that's your job. Amen. It is. I agree with you. It is my job. Oh, wait a minute. But it's not just my job. You see, the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a follower and a proclaimer of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen or oh me? <laughs> that's funny. I ain't answering that one. It should have been a big amen, church. Because the moment you accepted Jesus Christ, you became one of his ambassadors. People are watching you. This week, Jeff was gracious enough. We, he hosted a class. We was able to bring that class up here and had the college took care of the bill for that. And had a chance to have 42 officers in the class. And we talked about how to fight drugs and all those good things. And I, it never fails. Every time I give my intro, I make sure that I tell them what I do. And, of course, it was great here because I got to share with them not only what I do on Sundays, but also how I live my life. And, we, and praise the Lord, you fed them. They got to see that. A young man call, called me because he could not make class on Friday morning. I shared with Jeff. This young man who lives south of, uh, down around Cobb County area, he called me. His wife, they'd taken her to the emergency room. Her name is Ashley, by the way, and we'll be praying for her today. His name is Justin. And we prayed for his wife. I did that night as he called me. He says, I want you to know we're expecting our fifth child. She's eight months pregnant. And he called me. He says, I won't be in class this morning. And then he says this to me. He says, it is such a blessing to know that there is someone of a kindred spirit in law enforcement that loves the Lord. I can't tell you how much that, uh, you know, if it's just one, how good that feels to know that being able to, in that environment, to say, I'm a child of the King, that the Lord is part of my life, that you can do this job and have a relationship with Him, nothing to be embarrassed about, nothing to be ashamed of. And to have this young man call and said, would you pray with me for my wife? And we prayed that night. Susan was sitting next to me. We prayed for him and we prayed for her. And I told him we as a church would be praying for her. And that everything would be just fine. My dear friend, we ought to be running to tell others about Jesus. We ought to be living our life that others would see Jesus in us. These two Marys, you all remember that when Jesus Christ rose, the two Marys, and isn't it kind of amazing, two ladies, the men were chicken. Amen. 
Boy, I tell you what, we don't give our ladies enough credit for their service for the Lord. I've heard many say, well, the ladies need to be quiet in church. Thank God for the ladies in the church. I thank God for the ladies this past week. Wow, wonderful food. You want to reach a man, you fill his belly. Come on, let's be honest. Amen, church. What was one of the things that attracted you to your wife? She's a great cook. Well, you guys, I'm telling you, man, you need to look over and give her a big kiss, big smile. Here were these two ladies in Matthew chapter 20, verse 8. Looks here. It says, And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did what, church? Run to bring the word to the disciples. They ran to bring the word. What were they bringing the word about, church? That Jesus Christ had what? Had risen. Jesus Christ had risen. Who were the first to see Jesus? Those two ladies those two Marys, and they ran to tell the good news that Jesus Christ was alive. Church, we ought to be telling others that Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is the way. Remember Philip? As Philip was there, the Ethiopian eunuch, he was riding uh, back to Queen Candace. You know, he was, uh, you know, uh, he was entrusted with, 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 with the, 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 the funds. And he was up there and he happened to have this book called Isaiah. Had it open and he was reading about what Jesus was doing on the cross. But he didn't understand it. So the Holy Spirit touches Philip and says, Hey, Philip, you need to go up there and explain to this Ethiopian eunuch what that stuff's all about. Won't you notice in the Word of God what Philip did? Look at here. In Acts chapter 8, verse 30, it says, And Philip ran thither to him, and Philip ran to him, church, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Philip didn't, listen, when the Holy Spirit came to Philip and said, Hey, listen, this guy needs to know about me. Now listen, church, the Holy Spirit may be touching you this morning and say, Hey, listen, you need to pick up the phone and call this person. They're going through something in their life right now. They need to know about Jesus. They need to hear about the Lord. Maybe there's someone that, that crosses your path. Now, and, and all of a sudden you feel the Holy Spirit come upon you. You say, well, Marty, is that what that was? I thought it was heartburn from the chili I ate today. No, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you, church. All right? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and says, hey, listen, you need to share something about God with this person. Share Jesus with this person. Maybe you need to open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit flow through you. Amen, church? You'd be amazed what he can do. So Philip didn't just think about it. Philip didn't just stand there and ponder whether he should or he shouldn't. What's the Word of God say he did in Acts chapter 8? The Word of God says he ran to this Ethiopian eunuch. Oh, my friend, how we need believers in Jesus Christ who are willing to run and tell others about him. You want to see every church in this, uh, every church, every, well, yeah, every church. You want to see every church in Union County filled? You have the people within the church who profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior running to tell others about him. Boy, we'll run and tell them. We'll run and tell them about a new movie coming out. Hey, man, come on, go with me. Hey, man, come to the, the, the ball game. We'll run and tell them all these cool things that's happening. But, well, by the way, we, we're having open mic night Sunday night. Not that you have to come, not that you want to come, but just want to let you know we do have open mic night tonight. It's, it's like it's a, oh, it's there if you want to come. Oh, Sunday morning, you know, we, we do we at church, 10 o'clock. If, if oh, by the way, oh, we do feed you. If you want to come, we got something good to eat, you know. Man, we should be so excited about how God changes lives that we ought to be running and telling them about Jesus. Well, last but certainly not least this morning is not only do we run to tell others about Jesus, but how about forgiveness? We ought to run to forgive. The Word of God says that, in other words, to be forgiven, you have to be willing to forgive. That's one of the most difficult things for us to do. Boy, it's easy for us to run and hold a grudge and run and hold uh, animosity over someone and even run to get back. But very few of us will run to forgive. And I've got to be honest with you, church, that's one of the things I have to pray for in my life all the time. One of the most difficult things to do is to run to forgive. Amen, church? Is to run to forgive, run to reconcile. This is an interesting story, and I really wish, in fact, it's a whole message in and of itself out of Numbers chapter 16. If you want to truly understand God's justice and how much He hates sin, 
You read Numbers chapter 16 about how the Israelites had messed up. Not just once, but several times. And this is, this is one of those times where they had messed up. So much so that over 14,000 of them, God took, wiped them out. He said, I've had enough of this. In fact, Moses and Aaron had to go. In fact, notice here in these, in these verses, and this is where this is coming about. God is so angry at the Israelites that he's getting ready to do away with all of them. And Moses and Aaron go, and they say, Lord, look, notice here. And Aaron took, as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. Behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on the incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now that they that died in the plague were 14,700. God was so angry, he was going to do away with all of them. But yet God said, all right. And, and they took the incense, they took that sweet-smelling savor in there amongst the dead and the living and stood in between so God's justice would stop there and would not take out all the people. Sin will take you farther than you want to go and it'll cost you more than you're willing to pay. But my friend, let me tell you something. God sent His Son Jesus Christ to reconcile us to Him. God sent His Son to pay the ultimate penalty for sin. And all we have to do is accept Him as our Lord and Savior, to confess our sins and to believe in Him. And that plague, that eternal death and damnation, is stayed through the blood of Jesus Christ. So much so is the forgiveness of God for us that we as well need to forgive. I love the story of the prodigal son. I love that story, and I've preached many messages on this in Luke chapter 15 as I bring this message to a close. In Luke chapter 15, verse 20, I want you to notice this. It says this, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and notice these words, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and bring his, the, the ring, and put it on his finger, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted, and kill the fatted calf, and let's eat, and let's be merry. For this is my son who was once dead and is now alive. He was lost, and he is found. The forgiveness of a father for his son. A son who has said, you know what, I want to take everything I have. I don't want nothing to do with you anymore, nothing to do with this family. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to go live life the way I want to live it. And when he got out there, he found out that life wasn't all it was cracked up to be. It wasn't ma as mature as he thought he was and lost everything. In fact, found himself eating with the pigs. And he said, you know what, my dad's hired hands live better than this. I'll just go back and be one of his hired hands. And I love that story as he was, you could just picture him, just whipped, walking back, head hanging low. Probably felt as if he was no good, not worth anything. And it says his father saw him afar off. But the reality is this, we have to learn to forgive. Without forgiveness, there can never be restoration. Without forgiveness, things can never be whole. Many of you today are allowing something within your life not forgiving someone else to take control of you it's it's kept you angry it's just kind of chewed you up maybe this morning you just just need to forgive maybe this morning there's a phone call that you need, need to make maybe there's this this morning there's someone you need to just pull off to the side and say hey listen i just want you to know i forgive you i forgive you they may not accept it, but that's okay. Because the Bible says that we are to forgive. You know it's an amazing thing what happens when you forgive someone who's done something wrong? It's like it's just all been released. You just let go of it. No longer does it have control over you. So maybe this morning we need to run to forgiveness. We need to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Our message this morning is about running. Running to something or running from something. So where are you at in your life? I pray this morning that you're running from temptation. You're running from those things in your life that can cause separation. I pray that this morning you're running to things. Running to the fellowship of the Lord and what He wants for you in your life.
Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you so much. Father, we thank you that, like Paul, Paul says that we are in a race. He says to run to the race, to run in this race, to reach for the prize. Father, it's not about how fast we're going. In fact, you say that we're to have patience. It's about enduring. It's about staying in the race. It's, it's about not getting on the sideline, not getting knocked out. The Father staying in the race and trusting you. Father, there are some this morning that I know are having some difficulties in their life, some challenges, some fears, some heartache, maybe things they're running from. And Father, I would pray that they run to you, for you are their strong tower. You are their power. Father, we turn this, this message over to you as you have touched the hearts. Do with it what you will. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to present it this morning. In Jesus' precious name, all God's people said.